Hi everyone, Paul again here. This is the extension to the day three video. If you haven't seen it already, go and uh, check out the other races today on day three of the Grand National Festival. I'm um, just doing the Grand National separate because the video length would have been too big, to be honest, and would have been downloading it all day. So this is for the 515 at Aintree, uh, the Randox Grand National Handicap Chase, grade three, four mile, two and a half furlongs, likely to be run on good, good to soft ground. So this is going to be a very, very fast Grand National list. Um, most famous race in the world and uh, it's brilliant for the city of Liverpool we love this race from literally as early as I can remember we're going to go through the card in order so number one Manella Times Henry de Bromhead and the amazing Rachel Blackmore obviously this combination won the race last year this horse has only come out twice and hasn't been in the same form this year and is colossally up in the weights, carrying top weight off 11 stone 10. He loved the fences last year, jumped them as well as any horse I've ever seen jump it, though the, the rise in the weights is a concern. Number two, Delta Work, Gordon Elliott and Jack Kennedy. Uh, very impressive winner of the cross-country uh, chase at Cheltenham uh, last time out. Though it was a bit gutted, ruined Tiger Roll's send-off. Tiger Roll, the Cheltenham Festival legend and the legend here at Aintree, um, winning back-to-back -back, uh, Grand Nationals. Um, this is the logical next step for this horse. And the cross-country is starting to become a decent uh, schooling ground, for want of a word, uh, for the Grand National itself. Uh, again, Delta Works got a huge weight off 11 stone 9, but he's probably... Uh, uh, throughout his career one of the classiest horses in here and has a very obvious chance number three is schoolboy hours uh for noel mead and sean flanagan uh do you know what has a decent weight off 10 stone five though i tipped this one up at cheltenham and he jumped like an absolute pig and that was only three weeks ago um these fences would have to be a concern as would the trip as well um so he's a hard one to have much confidence in Number four is any second now uh, for Ted Walsh uh, and Mark Walsh, not his son, um, taking the ride. This horse came third in the national last year, but that doesn't tell half the story. Only beaten eight lengths, but I think it was the 12th or the 14th, not even at halfway. Got bought practically down to nothing. He practically got brought down, got shoved back in the field, came back through and would have to be very considered very unlucky in third. Only gone up £4 this year. Came back this season with an average effort to start with. Got better again, but was uh, in the Thysties last time out. Won really, really well. 11 stone 8. He's a classy horse, but he's a very, very big horse on this one. And I think any second now will take a hell of a lot of beating. Number 5, Run Wild Fred. Gordon Elliott, Davy Russell takes the ride for Jigginstown. I tipped this one up at the festival for the four miler and thought he'd be a good thing. He proved what he is. He is a plodder. That is what he does. He runs, he runs, jumps and plods. That will explain why. One win in four seconds in his last five starts. Maybe this extreme trip will help him. Uh, and one thing I would say about this horse, he's eight years old. He's in the right age range. He is uh, a stayer this horse will stay if he takes the fences he will stay all day i can see run wild fred with a lot of bookmakers paying even top eight on the grand national this year i could see him at 25 to 1 running a really good race number six is lost in translation colin tizard harry cobden takes the ride uh 10 years old now looked like he was gonna have a bit of a revival earlier this season one on comeback showed absolutely nothing since and nothing last year very very hard to recommend him Number seven is Brahma Bull for Willie Mullins and Brian Hayes. Um, unseated last time out, pulled the time before that. Uh, they, he, do you know what? He's kind of like a, an also ran horse behind other Mullins horses in the past. Um, I don't think he's going to get even half of this trip by the look of breeding. His jumping is a concern. He's impossible to recommend. Number eight is Burrow Saint for Willie Mullins and Paul Townend. Came fourth in the Grand National last year. Coming um, to the final four fences just after they went across the Mellon Road, he looked like he was going to play a very serious part. For me, didn't fully get home. He's more used um, to, well, he's, he'll be used to the course now. Um, and he's been in reasonably consistent form. I can see this horse possibly running well for a long way, but again, maybe tiring late on. Number nine, nine, Mount Eda, Gordon Elliott and Dennis O'Regan. Really disappointed at the festival when I didn't overly fancy it anyway. Um, 
stamina will have to be taken on trust and jumping like at Cheltenham is a big concern. He's hard to recommend. Number 10 is longhouse poet Martin Brazil and Dara O'Keefe. This horse disappointed last time out. But one thing I would say about this horse is um, this horse has got a lovely weight off 11 stone four, eight years old, nice place to be in. And I think looking at breeding again, stamina should be okay. Lack of experience over the fences is a worry, but if he can, he's very inconsistent. If he's on a going day, he could give you a good run. Number 11 is Fiddler on the Roof for Colin Tizard and Brendan Powell. And there'll be no more fitting winner for the national than this horse. Um, because obviously, if at the end of the season, Colin Tizard, who's been a staple of national hunt racing for so many years, he retires at the end of this season, so in about three weeks' time, and handing over the reins to his son, Joe Tizard, here. What I liked about this was his run at the start of the season when he came second in the Ladbrook Trophy. He was jumping well, seemed to get completely and utterly outpaced, but then run on like an absolute sedag towards the end and only went down by half a length. Went to Ascot in February, came second to four to skew. And again, all of his best work was at the end. He's a reliable jumper, usually. The only concern I've got is he's run twice on the mild May course at Aintree and disappointed both times. That would be a bit of a concern, I suppose you would say, on this. Number 12 is two for gold, Kim Bailey and David Bass. Beautiful horse, really, really consistent. He's not the best of jumpers and he's not the biggest of horses. Stamina has to be taken on trust. It, it wouldn't be a surprise if you put it all in, but it would be a bit of a shock if he was to prove good enough in this race. Number 13 is my old mate Santini, now trained by Polly Gundry. Nick Schofield takes the ride. Um, has won around Aintree. Uh, over hurdles and run very well in grade ones over chasers so clearly likes entry came eighth in the gold cup came second a couple of years previous he's not getting any younger and he seems to be slowing down but one thing about this horse usually he jumps well and he stays all day there's if you're going to have a little punt on something at 50 to 1 which he is there's worse bets than old Santini. Though, to be honest, in the grand scheme of things, I just hope he has a nice time, jumps around and comes home safe. 14 is Sam Crow, Gordon Elliott and Sean Bowen. Sam Crow at one point was absolutely destined for the top. He was going straight to the top and the wheels spectacularly fell off uh, on this uh, horse's career. This season, he came third at Cheltenham and he has shown the odd bit of form, though he's an enigmatic type of horse. He's jumping still seems to let him down and he's not what he once was 100 to 1 is a fair price number 15 is Ascaria 10 Gordon Elliott again Adrian Heskin takes the ride this horse has got the ideal profile if you ask me for a grand national horse uh, he found a lot of improvement for his comeback run um his comeback run was very, very disappointing. I've got to be honest. I was really uh, disappointed with it there. But he did come second to uh, any second now, only beaten by a nose at Furry House back in February in the Bobby Joe chase it was. It wasn't the Thysdys, it was uh, the Bobby Joe. Uh, jumping really well. As I said, Gorham Park first time out. I think he badly needed the run. My concern that I've got is... Um, I'm sorry, before I get to that, in the, uh, the four-miler at Cheltenham, came third last year, um, got headed towards the last. My concern I've got is go back through his career. When it gets to the end of March and April, he does seem to fall out of form. That will be the concern. But this is a horse, if he's ready, I think he is destined to run a really good race. Right age, nice weight, every chance. Number 16 is good boy Bobby. Um, 16 is good boy Bobby for Nigel Twist and Davis. Daryl Jacob taking the ride. Uh, shows bits of form, but in the I think his stamina is far from assured. I think he could run well for a long way. He's got a lovely weight. Uh, his run last time was a bit of a letdown, um, but uh, the, the chances are I don't think he's going to stay. 17 is one of the horses we've only got in today. Roman de Senam. David Pipe trains, Philip Armisen rides. I'm not actually sure how this horse even got in. I don't know why they're running it in this race. Um, he's shown no form for about four years, pulled up latest to Cheltenham, and you've just got to hope something doesn't go badly wrong and he falls and 
the worst happens. He shouldn't be in the race, in my opinion. 18, Coco Beach, Gordon Elliott, John Joe O'Neill Jr. taking the ride. This horse was formerly, uh, a couple of years ago, very, very uh, well thought of and ran some very good races in defeat. Seven years old, 10 stone 13. He hits the right boxes, but on balance of what he's shown in the last two years, he's still got a lot to find. Number 19 is Darasha Kanta, Emma Lavelle, Adam Wedge. This horse has had hardly any racing in the last three years. Uh, won uh, the Ladbrook Trophy a few years ago. Um, then he got one run, then he was injured, then he had another run and injured. But the fourth he came was after 400 and odd days off, and that was a very, very good run at Newbury, um, it's got to be said. If that's brought him on uh, on course, he will stay, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, but the, the worry is, he's obviously very brittle. 20 killed to start, Ben Paul in uh, James Bowen. Really likes this course. I tipped this up a couple of years ago. You might remember over the mild May course uh, when he won. But again, the chances are this horse will not stay the trip based on what he's got. Three mile at entry uh, on the mild may seem to be right at his most. This is another mile and a half further. Number 21 is Discorama, Paul Nolan and um, Brian Cooper taking the ride. Came seventh after an interrupted preparation last year and shown a bit of form actually this year. Um, 40 to 1, there's worse 40 to 1 shots. He's shown he liked the fences last time and just kind of plodded on. He is a bit of a plodder. Any rain would have helped. It could be fast enough for him now, but he could give you a good run. Number 22, Top Veal Ben, Paul, uh, Philip Kirby train, Tommy Dowson rides. Brilliant for Tommy Dowson to get a good ride. Uh, not a good ride, just any ride in the Grand National. Uh, this horse was woefully out of form at the start of the season, uh, but has picked up again since. Though he likes to be on the lead, he likes to dictate the pace, and the chances of him doing that over four and a quarter mile are slim. 23, Enjoy Dalen, Kieran Murphy, and Connor Orr. Um, this horse was sold to J.P. McManus because um, the old owners wanted to sell and they thought of him as a grand national horse. There's been steady money since. It's lovely for J.P. McManus to allow Kieran Murphy to small yard to continue training. He's got a lovely weight. He's the right age. And apparently he's been prepared for the grand national. So I'm not going to say the handbrake has been on, but they've obviously been getting some runs into him without him running too well. I think Enjoy Darling could run a very serious race. 24 is old Anna Barley Fly, uh, 12 years old now, Adrian, uh, AJ Martin trains, Luke Dempsey rides, shown he's been placed in the Grand National a couple of times, way down the field last year, and absolutely zero form this year. 12 years old, it will be a massive shock if he was to win. Number 25 is Dingo Dollar, Sandy Thompson, Ryan Mania uh, takes the ride. Uh, Ryan Mania has obviously won this on an outsider before with Aurora's Encore going back, what, 10, 12 years ago now. Uh, Dingo Dolly used to be with Alan King, and he always was a very, very decent um, chaser. Um, shown bits of form this year, but he's getting older, and the probability is he's not going to be good enough here. 26 is Freewheel and Dylan. Dermot, uh, McLaughlin train, Ricky Doyle takes the ride. Uh, back end of last year, won the Irish Grand National really well. Has shown no form since. And his jumping has always been suspect. Um, I, I can't see tomorrow being his day. Number 27 is Class Conti. Willie Mullins train. Sam Twist and Davis taking the ride. Uh, struggled with these fences last year. No form this year. Can't recommend him. Uh, the ride for number 28, Noble Yates, is very special tomorrow. It's Emmett Mullins trains, but it is Sam Whaley Cohen's last ever ride as a jockey. Confirmed it yesterday. He's retiring after the Grand National and he's been brilliant for the sport, winning um, the Gold Cup as an amateur on a long run. And he's been a mainstay on all of the major, major amateur races over the years. Um, Noble Yates, he's got bits of form and he's run over these fences before. But the probability is his jumping is not going to be good enough. Uh, but hopefully he gives uh, Sam Wally Cohen a nice spin round on his last ride. Number 29 is Mighty Thunder, Lucinda Russell and Derek Fox. These obviously teamed up with one for Arthur to win the Grand National four years ago. Mighty Thunder himself was a, a Scottish Grand National winner, but shown absolutely no form at all this year. It would need a huge step forward, <coughs> excuse me, and bounce back in form um, to go and win this one here. Number 30 is Cloth Cap for John Joe O'Neill. Tom Scudamore takes the ride. 10 years old now, but a lovely weight off 10 stone 10. Um, was favourite for the race last year and run well for a long way. 
but just cut out. They operated on his wind after that, and he's had a couple of wind surgeries. But my concern that I've got is in his last three runs, he looks well, and then he's emptied out again. Is the wind still a problem for him? On the balance of probability, it probably is. Number 31, there's always a story in the Grand National, and this could be the story. Number 31 is Snow Leopardess. Charlie Longston rides. Aidan Coleman, who's had a superb week this week, uh, takes a ride. <coughs> a mare in the field. She's in off 10 stone nine. Won the last three races on the bounce. But that doesn't tell half the story of Snow Leopardess. Yes, she has won the last three uh, at all of her races this season. She's gone and won. But what this doesn't tell you about this horse is, is she's a mother. In April 2021... Um, she had finished, uh, basically, or earlier in her career, finished a racing career. Uh, she had her foals, and then she went back into training, and this year has been as good as ever. Um, over the Grand National fences, won the Beecher Chase, which is always one of the big trials. Um, <coughs> excuse me, holding on gamely towards the end. She does look a very strong stayer. Back in March 2021, she came fourth in the National Hunt Chase, and... Uh, outpaced and staying on she just looks an out and out stayer beat mamella at exeter in a listed chase last time just out completely outstaying them again she's the right age she's the right weight she's got a story behind her and aiden coleman's flying snow leopardess if she takes the fences which again which she did at the beach chase it's if she handles this faster ground she's got every chance number 32 is augusta gold willie mullins danny mullins takes the ride uh, second last time out, kind of came out of nowhere at Cheltenham. But before that, no form at all. Jumping's always been suspect. Very hard to recommend. Number 33 is Commodore, who's just about managed to sneak in late in the day here for Venetia Williams and Charlie Deutsch. Uh, he's only had one run this season and won uh, and then kept, well, they kept it for the National and only just about got in. Um This horse is very, very fresh, but I always think there's a concern between being fresh for a Grand National and, you know, actually being below fitness of Watts level. But that win at Cheltenham in the handicap by 15 lengths from Mr. Fogpatches, okay, the form has been let down staggeringly since, but it was a huge step forward. And last season only went down half a length to Snow Leopardess at Haydock. Uh, in well actually say last season it was about a year and a half ago now so if you like snow leopardess you've got to like commodore and at 40 to 1 actually that's a big price 34 is dacia arbor <coughs> excuse me philip hobbs tom o'brien takes the ride very very consistent this year with three seconds the problem is with this horse is if you take it away from sandown it generally doesn't do anything this is a left-handed track completely different to sandown hard to recommend 35, welcome back to Black Lion, 13 years old, trained by Dan Skelton, Harry Skelton takes the ride, plugged on into sixth place last year, 13 years old, will be one of the oldest, if not the oldest horse to win the Grand National, uh, shown a bit of form this season, though pulled up last time, which was a big disappointment seven weeks ago, the type who will run a really, really good race for you without probably getting anywhere near the judge at the end. Number 36 is Poker Party. Poker Party just about got in again very late in the day. Henry de Brom head trains. Robbie Power takes the ride. No form at all this year. Limited form last year. 150 to 1. Very limited appeal. Number 37 is Death Duty. And Death Duty is another Sam Crow. Was destined for the top at one point, but probably flattered to deceive later on in his career. Gordon Elliott trains. The brilliant Jordan Gainford, who's lost his claim now. Um, it takes the ride. Um... I really like Jordan Gainford. Death Duty, a couple of starts ago, uh, suddenly bounced back to Formula One and run a respectable race at Cheltenham. What I would say is, though, is this. Jiggins Town uh, won with a horse called Rule, Rule, Rule the World uh, a few seasons ago at around 33 to 1. That horse has got a, such a similar pro profile to Death Duty. Looked to be good at one point. Kind of career went off the rails and then came back and won and then retired right after the race death duty at 33 to 1 if he takes the fences worst bets out there number 38 is domain de lille sean curran harry bannister no form this year no form last year just got in at the very end uh alf 10 stone seven the only thing going for it is he's nine years old another one i'm not 100 percent sure why he's running here to be honest 
Now, the bottom two in the weight are a little bit different. Number 39 is a Claire Surf, Emma Lavelle, Tom Bellamy, eight years old, 10 stone six. That ticks a lot of the boxes. Lovely weight, right age, and just about got in. What I like is here. This year, two major handicaps, a first and a second. More importantly, was the form of Newcastle. In the Ida chase, he went down a length and three quarters, giving weight away um, to win uh, to win my wings. Was six lengths down at the last and only got beat by a length. Win my wings, went on to win the Scottish National last weekend. So that form is massively franked. Time before that, the classic chase at Warwick, which has always been a really good... Um, I suppose you'd say a really good trial for this. Won it by 13 lengths. Didn't jump particularly great, but stamina kicked in. This horse stays all day. If he can just hold his jumping together on his first chance, uh, first try over these fences, because even in the Ida, there was a couple of like silly mistakes and you won't get away with it here, but he's got the right profile of clear surf. It'll bin money for it, 14 to 1 now. I think a good run, if he takes the fences, is almost guaranteed. And finally, number 40, Fortescue, Henry Daly, Hugh Nugent. Big day for him, takes the ride. And this horse, again, off 10 stone 6, 8 years old. Very similar profile to a clear surf. Kind of ticks the boxes for what you want. Stays 3 mile 2. That's all we know. He's never really gone beyond 3 mile 2. Um, but what I would say is this is by Shir bred out of Scirocco and it's likely, very likely, that he will stay the trip. Beat Fiddler on the Roof at Ascot last time and Fiddler on the Roof is the fourth favourite at the moment. If you like that horse, you've got to like this horse. Interesting as well, the time before that at Haydock only got beaten three lengths by Royal Pagal who run a decent race in the Gold Cup, it has to be said. Um, and he's been consistent all the way. For all, he didn't run a great race in the Ladbrook Trophy. Um, but overall, he's a solid jumper. He performs well. And at 28 to 1, there's much worse bets to have. But we're going to do a 1, 2, 3, 4, a special one for the Grand National. And this is where we're going with it. Number one, any second now. Uh, I'm going to go him for the win. I think he's got every chance. Number two, Fiddler on the Roof. Number three, Snow Leopardess. And number four, a Clear Surf. Good luck, everyone. Oh, and I've got to mention old death duty. You've got to have a little saver on him. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.